Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is John Stenhouse. I'm the Business Support Manager at the University of Essex, and I'm here with our webinar series, Space to Grow, Investment Readiness. We have on our panel today, we have Josh Clark, who's here to uh, help us, and we've got Simon Attack from Innovate UK Edge Program, who's going to talk about his innovation project canvas. University of Essex is very proud to present these programs, totally free, uh, available to everybody to come along and learn about investment readiness. And when we say investment readiness, we're talking about getting your business, your innovative idea through that seed stage where you can actually raise equity funding or indeed alternative funding to help it grow and nurture it through to its full potential. We are here, we're here to nurture businesses and help them to grow. We do it quite willingly and with great expertise. And our Angels at Essex Equity Investment Platform has actually managed to help businesses raise 10 million pounds in the last year alone. And that's for innovative ideas, innovative ideas that don't get a look in elsewhere. So remember, we are here to help. So let's talk about Simon Attack and the Innovate Edge program. I'm not going to steal his thunder, but Simon has been presenting the Innovation Project Canvas for a while now. And this program has been extremely useful, extremely useful to our clients who are going through the Investment Readiness Program. I will let Simon explain in much more detail, but let me just say that those people who have undergone this program and have then come on to our Angels at X uh, investment platform have done extremely well with investment. They're part of that 10 million pounds raised. So if you are serious about uh, moving your business forward and making it grow and making it grow substantially, I would very much like you to listen to Simon. Simon, it's over to you. Thanks very much, John, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the Innovation Project Canvas, which is a framework um, that uh, Innovate UK, um, who were Innovate UK Edge, um, the uh, sort of client facing front of Innovate UK, um, the Department for Innovation, we utilise to help businesses prepare themselves for grant funding investment uh, that we provide through Innovate UK but it is also an equally useful framework to utilize if you're looking for any type of funding. So whether that's looking for bank funding, loan funding, or whether you're looking for either angel or VC investment funding as well. So the Innovation Project Canvas provides a framework where you can look at all aspects of your business model and ask yourself, the detailed questions around what's the right sort of information that I need to have here in order to be able to make sure whoever I approach for funding is really going to understand the business model, understand what's unique about the proposition that we've got, and can really see the value in investing in the particular proposition that uh, we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the different areas of the canvas and the sort of things that you might need to consider in terms of those elements of your business model and the proposition that you have. And then at the very end, if there's any questions uh, that you may have, I'd be happy to, to answer those then. So in terms of the Innovation Project Canvas, what's really useful about it is it's a, it's a single sheet framework um, that we work on. So that helps you clearly see the business model as a good overview picture. And what we start with looking at is what are the uh, unique features that you have within the uh, business model that make you, make you stand out? So it's looking at really understanding where the disruption is in your innovation. What your innovation project's going to produce? Is it gonna be a new product? Is it gonna be a new service that you're uh, introducing? Is it new processes? Is it new materials? Is it new methods or applications? And why do you believe your project is gonna produce something highly innovative? Because you've really got to communicate this across in a very clear way, either in applications to, to Innovate UK grant funding or to investors. 
and you've got to really stand out from the competition that's out there that you're competing with for the uh, for the finance so that's the first area you really need to understand what is it that's unique about what you're doing what are the unique features then with the innovation project canvas we start developing delving into the technical feasibility of the project so it's no good having a great idea that's fantastic if you can't actually deliver on it and it isn't feasible to put it into large scale production so you need to be asking yourself why and how is it technically feasible to produce the idea as a product or service so what is the chain of production that you've got that allows that to to be manufactured at this moment in time are there any functional requirements or are there design features the market will demand of your idea and can these be achieved and also in terms of that area it's not only about today but moving forward into the future there's a lot of innovative development around all sorts of areas such as battery technologies um, electric vehicles and a whole range of other other sectors so how is the innovation that you're proposing going to fit in with the development of the industry sector that you're you're looking at and how are those functional requirements and design features going to be fit for purpose as the market and the sector moves forward so that you're not um, too late to market as it were in terms of your your design also you have to um, evidence that uh, you have the technical capability required either within your team or through the external supports that you have to be able to complete the development of your idea into a commercially viable product or service or process whatever you're looking at um, are there any industry standards or technical parameters within, within which you need to work? So are there legal requirements with the development of your product that you have to adhere to? Are there particular markets that you're targeting your product at, either sectoral or international, where you have to adhere to localized standards or certain technical parameters? So it's making sure that you're aware of those and you've done the research and you can confirm to investors or grant funders that you really understand this, you know what the particular challenges are and you've got it effectively covered off. Have you uh, also researched any other methods or solutions to the challenge that you're looking to solve, both from a technical viewpoint and also a non-technical viewpoint? And uh, as we say, is, is the idea that you've got and the feasibility study and everything that you've done, does it actually uh, follow the requirements set by law and regulations, as well as industry standards and uh, technical parameters that you have tied to those? So following on from looking at, we've got a great idea and it's unique and it's disruptive and this is why. We've now moved into looking at the technical feasibility of, yes, we can do it. We're able to, to build it at this stage and it complies with laws, regulations, standards, and we've got the right team in place to be able to show that we can deliver on it. We then need to start looking at the production process and evidencing why it's possible to scale up the production process to the levels needed to provide a real serious growth trajectory for your business. And so you need to be able to map out the full production process for your innovation and its commercialization and evidence how it's commercially viable to produce the idea on a large scale. So, for example, you might have a product that, uh, you know, you've done the basic core design work, you've had it 3D printed and it's fine for small scale 3D printing production. But if you were looking to scale it up into mass manufacturing, the way the components are put together and the type of materials that you're using may need to change in order to enable you to scale up the business effectively to a large scale, which investors are going to look at for their return on investment. So again, it's, it's providing the depth and breadth of the detail here and making sure that you're clearly showing in process maps. This is how our production process and commercialization process work. And this is why it's viable to move from the small scale test bed that you may have up to large scale production. Okay, so then another consideration that we have when thinking about products or services um, and innovations that are unique is thinking about the intellectual property rights that you have tied with that. And in terms of 
your IP is? Do you understand what your IP position is for your innovation? And have you got an IP management strategy that you've got laid out? So do you understand whether what you're looking to do is, is patentable? And have you got the right advice and knowledge around that area? Do you understand where your copyright situation sits for your business? Are you looking at using trademarks as a strong IP within the development of your, your product and service and brand? And so do you know which forms of IP protection you're likely to choose and why? And have you considered it not only on a, on a local level where you're starting off, but the ongoing development of the brand and the product if you're looking to take it out to international markets as well? Uh, other considerations are if you're perhaps a, a university collaboration, maybe, and you're working with sort of third parties, is do you have the right contracts and licenses in place to enable you to commercialize the idea that you have? So again, looking at the legal contracts in relation to, to IP and knowing where you sit with those is extremely important. And if you're talking to, to potential investors or people that you would like involved in the project to help you develop further from the ideas phase, do you have non-disclosure agreements, confidentiality agreements signed to cover that off to show that you've got the appropriate protection that you can have in place at the right time? So then after thinking about where we sit with our IP and uh, what IP we've got, how we're looking to protect it, what the management plan is, and how we're looking to leverage it as we move forward in the commercialization. We then want to uh, present what the project plan is in relation to the investment that the business is, uh, is achieving. And so it's putting down and utilizing things such as Gantt charts, which can be very useful here, as to what your, your R&D strategy is, what the major milestones and the key activities are that are need to be completed, to ensure the project's delivered on time? Um, have you made sure that the project is broken down into well-defined work packages? Because for some uh, funding, such as the Innovate UK funding that we have, you may have particular work packages that you want to put together in order to call off funding at certain stages in the, the project to make sure that the cash flow is working effectively for the delivery. What's the time frame for getting the innovation to market? Have you got a clear time frame, and are you confident from the project plan and the detail in the project plan that you're going to be able to deliver within the time scale promised for the funders that you're looking to get the investment from? Also, it's consideration around what contingencies are there in place that you've put in to ensure that the project progresses on time. So these are all important areas that funders are going to need to see clear evidence that you've considered and you've got the detail and also that it's easy for them to see and to, to understand. So within the business, um, again, as I say, we've, we've started off. So we've got a product that's got unique features or a service that's got unique features. We've evidenced that it's technically feasible. We've got a clear production process mapped out. We understand the IP that uh, we have for the project and the commercialization plan. We've got a project plan in place. And then as part of that, we've got a real overview of an understanding of the risks that are associated with different aspects of the innovation project. And again, these are key areas to, to look at, which a lot of businesses we find when we're working with business because could perhaps do a lot more in terms of their depth and breadth of research and information and knowledge. And key areas are intellectual property competition, customer adoption and diffusion, which again is, is very much a big area that you need to evidence that you really understand the market. And although you may have a fantastic product that you think is brilliant, that everybody in the world is going to want to buy, that you've really drilled down and evidenced where your core target market is and what the drivers are that are going to ensure that there's going to be customer adoption and diffusion at the rate that you need it to, to be in order to scale the business successfully and deliver on the promises of what you're um, promising for delivery of the innovation and the commercialization so that the investors get the return that they're looking for. 
other areas are things like technical risks or technological risks that may exist. There may be challenges around costs and revenue streams, and there also may be challenges around skills and experience. So again, it's doing a, a risk register and a risk analysis of all of these areas and really showing investors that you understand the landscape, you understand the business, and you understand how you're going to best navigate these particular challenges that you may have. So within the innovation project canvas on the left-hand side there in the slightly gray boxes, we've covered all the key elements internally with the business, looking at the innovation and the development of the innovation. So now on the right-hand side, we move further across into looking at the commercialization of the innovation. And so the first big area in terms of business is really understanding their innovation and how it it's going to reach commercial success is through really understanding the market potential. And so this is looking at identifying the particular trends or the challenges which are driving the innovation and evidencing these. Um, it's looking at how either a new market is being created or an ex existing market is being reshaped and how that this is going to provide a long term sustainable business opportunity. And so it's utilizing models both like the steeple model, which is looking at the macro environmental um, development. So whether it's social change, drivers that are driven through technological, economic, environmental, political, legal, or ethical um, developments, and how these impact your business, both in a positive way and also can be in a challenging way as well, and how you're going to work your way through that. And so what the funders want to know is, do you understand your market? And can you clearly show us that there's a great opportunity that exists there? And as part of that, not only do we want to see the, the big picture figures of where the, the market's moving, but we also want to know that there's a genuine market and a realistic sized market for what you're looking to achieve. So with the value of the market, it's considering not only the total available market, which could be, say, for example, 100, 100 billion market, but also considering where your business really sits within there. So it could be your serviceable addressable market it, for 100 billion overall total available market is somewhere like 100 million. And then within that, actually, your serviceable obtainable market, which you're looking to achieve over the next sort of five years might only be 15 million. But looking at it from a ground up perspective of how many units you're gonna produce, what your sales price is, how you're going to get that to market, it's looking at producing some detailed top down, bottom up figures that are gonna evidence that you've got a real credible opportunity and that you know your figures in terms of your forecasting projections very well and that they are realistic for what you're looking to achieve so that the investors, whether it's grant funding or venture capital, angel investment, are confident that they're going to see the return on investment that they're looking for. And so the things you need to ask yourself, what's, what's the estimated value of our accessible market? What's the growth trajectory of that market? What market share are we looking at that we might expect to win over the next three to five years? And what are the characteristics of the markets that we're going to approach? And how can we prove that we can create a defensible position within those target markets? Right, okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is having looked at the big picture of where the market sits. We're now looking at drilling down further into the customer segments and understanding out of that big market that you have, who really are your, your customers? So who's going to use the innovation? And, and also users may be different to customers as well. So it's considering those different elements and how your innovation will be developed and deployed in relation to that. It's understanding what are the nature of the different target customer segments that you're going for and how you're addressing those differences. It's looking at whether you've defined customer user profiles by both characteristics and also by behaviors. And also thinking about 
whether you have visited potential customers or users to align your innovation to their business problems or challenges. So then we further move down. So we've looked at the big market potential, drilled down into the customer segments. And then from the customer segments, it's really looking at understanding with our innovation that we have, what is the value proposition that we've got when addressing those customer segments? And this is one of the most important areas to really look at and understand with creating the innovations and commercializing those. And uh, the value proposition canvas that you can see there in the, uh, in the corner is an extremely important and useful tool for both developing innovations and feeding change into those innovations and also um, putting forward your, your marketing message. And uh, the reason this is the case is because you look at it from the right hand side where you've got the customer jobs and you're for each customer segment you're engaging with, you're trying to really understand the customer's jobs to be done and what they're trying to do. You're also then understanding what the challenges or pains they have with carrying out those jobs and what things are added value or potential gains that they would be interested in, in attaining from a product or service. And from that, you can then shape the product or service that you're innovating and ensure that your product or service is delivering the right gain creators and the right pain relievers for that particular customer. So on the one side, from the customer and your analysis of the customer, it's feeding into your shaping your product development and refining that. And then on the other side, when you're looking at marketing to this particular customer segment, you're also got a clear message in terms of this is our product or service that has these features, which are the gain creators and pain relievers, to deliver these benefits, which are the gains and the pain relief that you're specifically addressing to help the customer in doing their job. So it's providing relative, relevant marketing targeting in order to ensure that that particular customer really, enjoy, really understands that you've got the right solution for what they're looking to, to achieve in terms of purchasing a product or service to solve their challenges. And in terms of this, this area, the things that you need to be asking yourself is, which customer and or user problem is your innovation helping to solve? So it's really clarifying that. It's looking at what will it take for your customers or users to experience the benefits of your innovation? So how are they going to, to experience that? It's highlighting how your business model differs to those used by the competitors and how does it benefit your customer more. And it's through doing the value proposition canvas and analyzing what the customer jobs are, what their pains and gains are, and what your solution is to solve those challenge areas means that you will be far more aligned with what the customer is looking for than your competition. So it helps pull out the benefits that you have and how what the differential is that you've got between your offering to your competitors. And then what new characteristics does your innovation offer as well? So wh where are the innovations? Is it in accessibility? Is it uh, in complementary, convenience, cost reduction, customization, ease of use, efficiency, savings? So where, where are the innovations that help deliver that to meet the needs of the customer? So once we've had a look at uh, the value proposition, so we've had the big market potential that we've delved into, we've drilled it down further into the customer segments, and then we've drilled it down even further to understand what the value proposition is that's right for each customer segment that you're looking to, to target. We then look at channels, so identifying the most effective channels to distribute and inform others of your innovation. Um, so it's how you're likely to distribute your new product or service, answering that question, and also detailing what your strategy is for getting the innovation into the marketplace and exploiting its potential. Because all of the investors, whether it's grant funding from organisations like Innovate UK or whether it's other investors, will want to know what is the commercialization plan and how are you effectively going to get to market? What is your strategy? So this is a, an area which, again, it's important to provide that depth and breadth 
of detail. And then as part of the analysis of, of looking at the market, again, it's very important to spend the time highlighting who the competitors are, who's operating in your market space, which of the major players in the market could be considered as direct competitors, as indirect competitors or replacement competitors, what competing products or solutions are being developed at the moment or already on the market that it could affect your commercialization, and uh, what is the commercial state of the art available today in this sector. So again, it's all of this knowledge. And likewise, it's looking at understanding your competitors. If you're looking for investor investment or angel investment, it's understanding benchmarking of the investment journey as well that competitors might have had, which you can use to then validate whether the financial ask that you're looking for and the equity level of investments um, that you're looking to divest is going to be um, right in terms of looking at it as a benchmark and seeing whether um, it's realistic and whether you have a good chance of achieving that. So again, competitor analysis is extremely important. And then we also look at customer relationships and identifying how people are gonna find out about the innovation, how you're disseminating the results of your projects, what your marketing plans are, how you're going to maximize impact using channels such as press releases, conferences, are you going to be doing white papers in scientific journals? Are you carrying out workshops or newsletters? And how will your activities pave the way for future market entry? And are there any conditions, um, depending on the relationships that you have, if you have a collaboration that you're working on the innovation project, as to whether there's any restrictions that you may have by partners on publishing or marketing as a result of the type of uh, technology or innovation you're developing. So it's being clear on all of these areas and being able to again document and uh, detail that. We then looked at all of the areas of the market, the competition, our value proposition that we have in relation to the customer segments that we're engaging with and how we're going to disseminate our fantastic innovation to, to the world and, and encourage the commercial uptake of it. So as part of other areas that uh, investors are going to want to know, obviously there's things such as the uh, revenue streams, which is how you're going to make money from your innovation and how you set a selling price for the new product or service or process. And how this compares with your main competitors. So in terms of your pricing strategy, this is gonna be very important. So are you going down the route of a cost plus pricing? Is it consumer led pricing? Have we got competitive pricing, premium penetration? Is it uh, a skimming approach or an economy approach or is it even freemium? And uh, have you calculated the return on investment your business might expect from the project? What form of revenue stream you'll be using? For example, digital, asset sales, it might be commissions, fixed prices, e-commerce or, or licensing. And so it's being clear about where the revenue streams are coming from and that you've got realistic financial models to, to back that up for the investors who are putting, putting the money in. The other, other areas um, which we'll also look at, not only is the uh, looking at uh, the revenue side, is also looking at the cost structure and really understanding what the estimated total cost of the project is, what amount of internal or external funding you actually need and whether that's a realistic amount for what you're trying to do, what financial investment has actually been made into the project so far and who has put that money in, um, whether you have a breakdown of costs associated with the project and you can clearly show that, it's understanding and showing that you've estimated the relationship of the cost by unit price to that of the selling price for your most dominant customer segment. And then if you're seeking external investment, how are you likely to acquire the match funding? And also how much follow-on financing may be needed to bring your innovation to market? Because again, investors who are putting in initial investment rounds are going to want to know that the investment is gonna to lead to a sustainable 
business model and it's not just going to fund um, a bit of R&D and then it's going to collapse it, and then need a dramatic amount more funding that you're going to struggle to get hold of. You need to show that there's a clear development and investment plan for the business to take it up to being a sustainable business model and scaling successfully. And in terms of the remainder of the project, it's clearly identifying how you're going to finance that. So clear financial plans, both in terms of revenue streams and also your breakdown on, on cost structures are extremely important. And then in terms of one of the most important areas um, to look at when you're looking, particularly for angel investment and, and BC investor funding is the team. Who's, who's involved in the business and what experience have you got there? So have you got experience either internally or on the board that you have finance, operations, marketing, sales, product service development are all the key areas of the business which need to be addressed properly for high growth. Are they covered by people who know what they, they're doing? Um, are there senior people within the business who have experience of scaling um, innovation and commercializing it and bringing it successfully to market? Are there also senior people within the business um, who have experience of gaining investment as well? So who've previously been through um, investment rounds and gained funding? Is there sufficient capacity in the business to keep the project moving to its conclusion within the agreed timescale for the project? Which key external partners are you going to need to work with to successfully execute the project? And what changes are you going to need to make to your business processes or systems to accommodate the innovation project? And also, is there any prior experience within the business and your team of IP and patenting, copywriting, trademarking, etc.? So it's showing that you have a very robust team in place who have the right skills, the right knowledge and the right experience to make sure that investors feel confident that the whole project is going to be delivered and it's going to be delivered effectively within the time frame given. Okay, so in terms of the innovation project canvas, that covers all of the key areas and key information that investors are looking to, to really understand and see the depth and breadth of the detail there in terms of looking at either assessing grant applications when they come in or alternatively looking at a finance opportunity as, a, as an investor. And the important thing to do as well is and on top of having all of the information about this is our business, this is our innovation and our idea and our project plan and risks associated with it. This is our commercialization plan. It's also important to make sure that you cover the context of the business model environment that you're working in as well in terms of the applications that you're putting in and evidencing, as we said before, things like Steeple, where you're really showing the key trend drivers that are in place that make it a valid and sustainable business plan. So identifying those market forces that can affect the business and the project is looking at competitive forces and really highlighting any strong industry forces that are there that could affect the model one way or the other. So it's really having a comprehensive analysis done in terms of the presentation uh, that you have. Now, in terms of um, top tips, uh, when you're looking at uh, going for, for funding, um, I would say that uh, first off, it's really about reading and understanding the requirements. Um, whether that's a grant funder like Innovate UK or whether it's an investor, it's really making sure that you understand what their cri key criteria is, what timelines there are for submission, how they score applications or validate applications, what values they have, and, the, and those sort of things. So really understanding who the funder is. And it's only by doing a lot of research on the funders um, that you can build that picture up and see how you can shape your proposition to make sure that you've not only got a value proposition for your target customers and the customer segments, but you've also understood and developed a value proposition for the investor that uh, you're looking to get funding from as well. So researching the funder is very important. 
once you've started drafting out your proposal, it's often important to strip back, go back to the beginning, really delve into it and question everything and make sure you really validate what your assumptions are. And then from there, refine the project proposal further using the framework. Uh, as I say, don't assume. <laughs> it's all about evidence. So devil is in the detail. The credibility and the strength of the delivery plan is absolutely key to the success of the funding applications you put in. So you need to get rid of any assumptions and make sure you can evidence them with facts and figures uh, from the industry. And as I say, like we were looking at um, the total available market and the serviceable obtainable market is top down, bottom up data is what you're going to want to provide to investors to make sure that they feel you really know what you're doing. You've really nailed the figures and there is a genuine opportunity that's there and it's a realistic opportunity. Uh, you need to remove the rose tinted glasses and be realistic about the proposal, both in terms of the risks. Again, what we were talking about is depth and breadth of detail around the risks and the opportunities uh, that are there and being realistic in the figures. Uh, and to answer the questions that are asked, often we get grant applications in where um, the answers that have been given haven't actually answered the question that was being asked in the grant application form. So you need to make sure you double check what is the investor or the grant fund uh, asking for and have I answered that question and also within doing that, it's about being concise and uh, eliminating jargon. So we may have a wonderful technical uh, sort of uh, jargon that goes with uh, various industries, um, which you know yourself and the industry knows, but if you're having a panel of five assessors and one of those is from your industry and the other four are from different industries uh, and they don't get the jargon, it's going to impact negatively on your application. So therefore you want to make it as clear as possible for anyone to be able to understand what your innovation and what your proposal is. And then you've got to be right on the money. So again, it's understanding through your market analysis and what you're looking to do and your competitor analysis that the funding amount that you're proposing is gonna be right for the business um, yourself in terms of what you can reasonably expect to get in terms of investment, that it's the right amount of money for the project that you're working on and will cover the whole costs of the project and ensure that it's a successful delivery. And also that it's the right amount of money for the funder and the fund. So if you know it's a hundred million uh, pound, hundred million yeah, pound or dollar fund that's, that's there, but it's only being split by 100 businesses, you know that you can't ask for the 100 million full out as for your project. So therefore it's understanding the funder and being right in terms of the money that you're asking for from that funder. And likewise with, with investors, again, they'll have their sweet spot in terms of their, their investment um, amounts that they're looking to put into businesses. And again, it's understanding wh where are the sweet spots for them and how can you best reflect that in your, in your applications. Um, again, what's in it for them? Understand and showcase the required impacts, because at the end of the day, um, for investors, they're going to be looking at maybe a 10 times return on investment. So can you show that you're going to achieve that for them in five years? Um, in terms of grant funders, it's looking at the impact. So for the money invested uh, that Innovate UK might put into your business, they're going to look to see that the business is going to scale, the turnover is going to increase, that uh, there's going to be an increase in number of staff within the business, there's going to be internationalization involved, that there's going to be uh, an increase in benefit to growing supply chain. And so it's being able to, to evidence all of these things and make sure that it's not just about your project, but it's clearly showing how the project that you're doing is going to deliver the impacts that the investor is looking for. And then it's regularly and clearly within your applications and your pitch decks, reinforcing your USPs and the wow factor, as it is a competition and you've got a lot of competition out there. And uh, then setting enough time aside as well to really invest the time in shaping your proposals. Uh, because again, um, sometimes we, we have uh, applications where um, 
companies are, are, are submitting them in the last few minutes before the application time is about to close off. Everybody does it at once, and then the whole system breaks down, and uh, and then they miss miss the application deadline. And likewise, with the amount of information that you need, I mean, carrying out proper market research, good competitor analysis with lots of data backing it up. This this takes time. It's not something that you can just uh, rush off. So again, I'd advise setting enough time to make sure that you can really devote yourself to putting together your business plan, the depth and breadth of information you need, then having time to review it and get external reviewers to look at it as well from different viewpoints, and then do your finalized uh, submission and make sure that you get it in, in early. And as I say, using external reviewers and resources, there's a lot of help that's out there. And so it's making sure that you're aware of that help and also that you make use of it as well, um, because it does make a big difference in terms of how successful um, you are in terms of the applications and, and winning the funding that, uh, that you're looking for. And in terms of uh, resources, as we were saying, um, there's a lot of different things that you can utilize to help uh, develop your business planning. So you've got things like the Innovation Project Canvas and various other Canvas models uh, that you can use to help structure the information that you're collating and, and validate that and make sure you've got the right information. Uh, there's the funding providers that you can talk to who can provide a lot of help and information through their websites and also through nominated contacts. You've got local growth hubs um, who are very helpful. You've got the Knowledge Transfer Network if you're looking for sector specialists. Again, uh, specialist catapults as well that we have in this country can be of help. Um, for internationalization queries, we've got the Department for International Trade and Chambers of Commerce as well for, for local business and, and exporting queries. There's industry bodies, there's the library, um, which have a useful support in terms of intellectual property as well, if you're looking at, uh, at doing research on that. Um, there's lots and lots of online resources, and then there's also ourselves at, uh, at Innovate UK Edge, um, who are here to, to help you as well. And in terms of uh, Innovate UK Edge, um, as I say, we are the, the front end of, of Innovate UK, which is the Department for Innovation, and we provide tailored support to businesses um, within the UK that helps them develop their innovation plans. So we work with businesses to on tools like the Innovation uh, Project Canvas and, and a range of others to help them develop their strategy, look at um, their plans in terms of, of how they're going to market and help with assisting them with partnerships, internationalization and all together putting together the bids that they're looking to submit either to Innovate UK or otherwise to, to investors um, for funding. Um, the service that we provide is completely free of charge. And so if any of you have businesses where you're currently developing a, a product or service and you're looking for support, then obviously um, feel free to get in touch with us and we can see how we can be of help. My contact information is there, but you can also get it uh, get it from John as well. Thank you for uh, joining us today. And I cannot emphasize enough, I said it at the beginning, those that go down that route stand a much better chance of achieving the results that they're looking for, for their innovation. It's a very good, it's not so much a test. I, I don't like to use the word test. It's a validation of what you're doing. And that's the important thing. And everybody who's going to invest in your business needs some kind of reassurance that they're doing the right investment. And this program is an excellent way of demonstrating that. So thank you very much indeed, Simon. Questions that you mentioned on a number of occasions, uh, the, the team. Now, yeah. a, a lot of people who have created their idea, it's their idea. Mm -hmm. and uh, they may have gone for intellectual property, they may not. That's a debatable subject. We'll debate that another time. The, but this whole thing about a team, they, some of the people that I speak to, they worry about the fact that they haven't got a business partner or they haven't got a, a group of people behind them. 
Can you explain, how do you view a team when you're viewing an innovative idea coming to you? I think, what defines I mean, a team? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the team, it is, it is very important because it's um, having a solid team in place adds to the credibility of the business and removes the risk um, for investors. Because it, if you've got one person who's, who's got an idea and from business continuity point of view, if something happens to them, uh, then the whole, whole project is at risk. And likewise, there are, we can only do so much as individuals. And so trying to wear all of the hats in the business, which often as, as, as small business owners, we, we start off doing, um, that again means that we do a lot of things, but not all of them are necessarily done by the best people who could, who could be doing that for us. And so finding a team, even if it is pulling together a board yourself that are external sort of contacts that you have that you can work with, somebody who's, you know, maybe looks after your accounting and finance side of things, someone else who's maybe got the, the sales and marketing knowledge, somebody where you can engage an, an IP lawyer to look at your, your IP. Um, it's, it's very important to to have that team in place, particularly if you're you're looking at getting investments from either Innovate UK or from uh, other other investors, because they're going to want to see a business that's credible and that's going to scale. And there's a certain stage with small businesses where if you are a single owner manager and you continue along that route, there's only so far that you're going to be able to, to, to get. And so it's putting into place the infrastructure to be able to actually move forward and, and scale effectively. And, and there's, there's different ways of, of doing it. They don't all have to be employees within, within the business. And, and a, lot of, a lot of small sort of tech companies make use of non-exec directors and, and make use of, of wider contacts to be able to pull together a team that can help them grow and scale effectively. I, I agree. I think if, um, if you've got alongside you and they don't necessarily need to be employed by you, but they could be advisors to you, both from the sectors that you're working in, from the technologies that you're working with, because some technologies embrace more than one sector, and the commercialization side of it, the, the, the marketing and the selling side of it, who, who is actually going to take this innovative idea, which you have created, so you know all the technical aspects of it, but who's actually going to sell it? Who's the best person to sell it going forward? So th those kind of areas need to be embraced. But we're available uh, during normal office hours. I won't say we work 24 seven, we haven't reached that level yet, but we're certainly available for, to answer any queries. Uh, please, by all means, email UEZ, that's uniform, echo zebra at essex.ac.uk and we will endeavour to help and support you on your journey. Thank you once again. I'm John Stenhouse, the Business Support Manager, Josh Clark, and from Simon Attack from Innovate Edge UK. Thank you once again. Goodbye. <laughs>